Hi guys, I'm Ian Barnard. Welcome to a new video. Today I'm going to be talking about my top five lettering books. So first up we have the ABC of Custom Lettering by Ivan Castro. Ivan is a graphic designer and typography teacher who goes through a range of different step-by-step -step techniques to hand draw a variety of styles. So one of the best I find is the brush script one where he goes through how to get the thick and thins how to um, copy a model sheet that it gives you, connecting letters together, just general tips and tricks for how to get this style nailed, really. And then he uses that same sort of formula to look at serif letters and um, the legibility of that, how to construct them, and also um, how to uh, mix that up with um, different variations. And he also does that with the sort of sans serif look and also gives you tips on how to draw the infamous letter S. He then looks at formal script and the areas that you can greatly improve the quality of your letter forms. He touches on sort of rhythm and structure and takes it from a sketch to sort of final logo design. He looks at black letter and variations of that. And he also looks at sort of connecting, interconnecting type, interlocking type. And then finally it ends up with uh, composition and hierarchy, how to combine different styles and um, what each, what a poster should look like. Uh, giving you ideas of angles to use, how to empathize certain words. So, uh, yeah, that's a really good book. That's the ABC of Custom Lettering by Ivan Castro. So at number two, we have the Logo Font and Lettering Bible by Leslie Cabarga. I think I don't know if I pronounced that right, so sorry if I haven't. This book covers such a range of lettering information, it's hard to know where to start. And when you're flicking through the beginning pages of this, you think you've got like a book on vintage type, but it's actually the author going through the sort of history uh, of lettering and logos, and even touches on the infamous uh, Pierre Bezier, who is the inventor of the Bezier curve. If you ever use the pen tool in Illustrator or Affinity Designer, you'll know of the Bezier curves. So that's just like a little snippet of information that's useful. And even though, it touches on a lot of analog techniques. Uh, most of the book is taken up with sort of digital drawing of letters and goes through how to construct letters, optical variants, and why we use certain things to make letters uh, look weighted right. And it also goes into Adobe Illustrator Basics, which I suppose can be used for other programs as well. Um, but that's really useful if you really want to get into digital lettering. And especially, and I know a lot of you get frustrated with the Bezier Curves, um, it has a section, um, Bezier Curves for Cowards, which is really useful and will help you to get those smooth curves and hopefully get you out of that frustration place that you might be in. And, and it speaks a lot about that, and especially this page about nine Bezier Rures. Uh, they're just tweaks that will help you to get whether smooth curves or just make them look more round, rounded, it depends if you've been making a Ryan letter or not, but um, all this is really useful tips. But the way it's laid out is just really, uh, just there's a vast array of information and you have to do a lot of reading to, which for me is quite hard, I'm quite a visual person, so um, I sort of look at the pictures and hopefully make it out like that. But that's really useful and then it goes into um, other effects with your type, so drop shadows, 3D lettering as well, uh, covers quite a few pages on that. Effects for inside the type. Uh, this is a good section, type on a path and how to manually manipulate your type to have a curved baseline and make it all look right rather than just squashing it up and using the text effects in, in stuff like Adobe Illustrator. And this book also has a guide about how to make your own typefaces. Uh, it uses a program called Photographer. I've never used that program, but the same rules apply to something like Glyphs app or Font Lab. Uh, so that's a really good section. And then it finishes it off with a business section 
But bear in mind, this is 14 years old, this book, so prices will be a bit out of date, but it's worth reading to get some tips if you want to make this uh, into, into a career. So that is the Logo Font and Littering Bible by Leslie Cabarga. At number three, we have The Golden Secrets of Lettering by Martina Floor. Martina is a very talented designer and illustrator and great at breaking down her process into easy to understand instructions and guidelines. So she starts off um, her book looking at the difference between typography or type design calligraphy and lettering, which is useful to know. And then uh, she looks at sort of terminology, all different parts of the lettering. which goes on for quite a few pages, uh, sort of basic shapes, uh, optical adjustments, spacing, weight and contrast. Yeah, just lots of helpful information. But I wouldn't try and read it all in one go because it's, there's quite a lot there to take in. So just read it sort of a few pages at a time. Uh, then she uses the book to use the title of the book to go through the process um, starting with a sort of hierarchy and structure, moving on to the sketching process, working with layers, using tracing paper to sort of refine your lettering, and then finally, like digitally drawing your uh, letters on the computer as well. And she offers some really helpful tips again with working with the Bezier curve. And then finally, she talks about adding color to it, um, which is <laughs> helpful for me. I'm not very good with color, so that's a good bit for me. And then the last section of the book is all about uh, becoming a professional lettering designer and the business side of things, uh, the ins and outs of pricing and creative briefs and promoting, getting feedback and loads of information that you may not know or even consider when wanting to do this as a business. Um, so Martina also uh, teaches on Skillshare. She has a few classes on there. So I'll add some links in the description below for, for those. So that's the Golden Secrets of Lettering by Martina Fleur. At number four, we have the Speedball textbooks. Uh, they're currently on the 24th edition of these, but they date back to the first release, which was 1915. These have been written by a variety of authors. So they're a bit different, but also similar in certain ways as well. Uh, I love these because of the size. They're really small, so they can fit in your bag if you want to go and work in a coffee shop and uh, do some sketching. And uh, each book starts with a section on um, we have history and then tools and materials. Speed will actually produce their own um, own calligraphy tools, so obviously they have to mention that. And then you have like calligraphy terms. And then it starts into sections where you get these double page spreads of how to do certain styles. So you have black letter, uh, variations of black letter and Gothic styles, italic, flourishing with italic. You have copper plate script. You have sands, you have brush script. And then it goes on to sort of further study. So you're looking at spacing, looking at layout design and actually reproducing your work um, physically, envelopes, invitation, uh, greetings cards, business cards, stuff like that. And then um, the sort of last section is like a gallery of what people have done. But for me, it's quite old school, not really my taste. Uh, it's not the best section of it. But um, yeah, so that's uh, the Speedwell textbooks. And you can pick up, these are the things you probably find at um, at secondhand stores, stuff like that, um, but really useful, packed full of information, these ones. And number five is uh, the lettering tips for artists, graphic designers and calligraphers by Bill Gray. This book may be nearly 40 years old, but I still find it really useful when it comes to lettering. In a way, it's quite similar to the Speedball textbooks, but goes into a little bit more depth. Um, it starts off with sort of the makeup of, of each letter uh, and then looks at 
spacing, tools, uh, construction, uh, starting with Roman capitals. It does a lot on Roman capitals because actually quite a lot of this book is sort of foundation is Roman capitals. It even gets quite geeky into the sort of geometric drawings of those letters if you need to know that. And then it goes into sort of formal script and how to construct those letters and these are really useful when it gives some tips on common areas that you might come up with. Uh, then decorating letters, not all my to my taste on these but gives you some great ideas for stuff that you can do to emphasize your fewer letters. Then it goes into sans serif construction and I found this part really useful like how to draw an S, how the G is made up here and it makes up other letters like the A and the D. And sans serif is probably the, the style I use along with script the most. So having this as a basis is a really good and showing how many different styles can be made from it and also looking at condensed letters and how they differ. And then the last section of the book is made up again like the other ones sort of a design and layout. Uh, again because this is so old some of it may not be applicable. It goes into some reason doing graphs if that's the thing. Um, uh, textures a uh, physical way of making guidelines um, and writing on a curve uh, and contemporary styles which are now not really that contemporary so uh, yeah bear in mind that it's quite old uh, just one bad point about it is that the whole thing is written handwritten in italic calligraphy which is really hard to read in big chunks so just bear that in mind I use it more as a reference just visually rather than reading reading up so um, so that is the lettering tips for artists, graphic designers and clippers by Bill Gray. So that concludes my top five lettering books. They're probably the books I use the most because of their range of styles and techniques in them and offer the best value for money. If you are thinking about checking them out, I'll leave links in the description below. They're affiliate links, which means you don't pay any more. It just means I get a small, small percentage if you do buy via those links. It just helps out the running of this channel. If you've got any other recommendations for books I haven't mentioned, then leave it in the comment section below for everyone else to check out. Otherwise, uh, I'll see you in the next video.